We need a word from you. Oh, yeah. The song says we need a word from you. And uh, this evening we come uh, with a word from the Lord. And we, again, grateful that you decide to join in with us. Our um, our subject going to be taken from uh, Jeremiah chapter number 8. Jeremiah chapter 8. Um, and uh, we're going to be talking about allowing God to heal. Allowing God to heal. And um, y'all know I'm a little different. I, I'm a little uh, contrary or a little different from a lot of other people. Um, we... Uh, think about healing we always thinking about you know our physical body um and yes our god does heal our physical body you know but this evening we want to talk about allowing god to heal as it pertains to our relationship with him uh allowing god to heal you know as as it says in second chronicles 7 and 14 um you know if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and I will heal the land. Uh, we're talking about that kind of healing tonight. Um, yes, there, uh, there's sickness all over the, all over the land. And even though it seems as though this pandemic is, um, it's breaking. Um, it's not as bad as it was when it first began. It's still going around. Sickness is all over our land. Pestilence. Um, and our God is a healer. Uh, uh, aside from, you know, COVID and, and things of that nature, uh, you still got cancer and, and you know, all, all kind of heart diseases, blood, collect low and high cholesterol, all kind of stuff going on. But And, and I just want y'all to know God is a healer. Um, and anybody out there who who's ever had a, a physical ailment and you know God healed your body, you ought to be shouting tonight. <laughs> Amen. Because the doctors, the nurses, um, <clears throat> they do the best they can and uh, prescribing medication and operating on our bodies. But at the end of the day, it's only God that does the healing. And you got to know, you know, God is the healer. <laughs> so with that in mind, um, it's a lot of uh, people out here uh, dealing with mental issues. Um, and a lot of people go to therapy and deal with um, mental health is issues. And um, when it comes to uh, mental health issues, uh, you know, you can break your leg when you're young and, and you know, get a cast put on it. And uh, after a while, you, you, your leg heal up and, you know, to take the cast off. And uh, after a while, you back running around again and get on up in adulthood, you remember you may remember you broke your leg, but the way you walk on it, run on it, or whatever, is you're not affected by it. Now, when it comes to uh, that's a physical um, injury, okay. So, but when it comes to emotional and mental um, ailments and and injuries that that you know happen to us mentally and and emotionally. It ain't as easy as putting on a cast because some of those things, you know, you can be hurt in a, you know, relationship wise, you know, your father and child relationship or your mother and child relationship or sibling relationship or friend relationship. And that type of um, abuse or, or that type of injury to your mentality or your emotions will carry into your adulthood so much it till it if affect your adult relationships okay so um 
I got the dog shouting hallelujah. So, <laughs> so I know it must be a word from the Lord. Um, so these type of things are not as, and I'm not saying a broken leg is, is an easy fix, but what I'm saying is, um, emotionally and, uh, mental, um, hurt is, is a, if it's not dealt with, can ride you on into your adulthood. So, um, what about our relationship with God? <clears throat> what about our relationship with God and how, um, when, when our relationship with God is breached, all right, there's a break in our relationship. Uh, how is that mended? And that's what we're going to talk about this evening because many of us are more uh, focused on our physical body. So we want to make sure our physical bodies are, uh, stay healthy. And when, when we start feeling signs or something in our body that something don't feel right or something ain't right, we start to deal with it accordingly. But things that, that uh, attack our spirit, things that attack our emotions, things that attack our mind, we, we're not apt to, you know, deal with it until, you know, it gets too bad. And then we, we, we look back and, and be like, well, what, what could I have done? What could I have done different? So we're going to look at a story in Jeremiah chapter eight concerning God's people and, um, how they let their, uh, relationship with God go uh bad and and nothing was done about it until it was too late okay and we don't want to wait till it's too late that's why we come to bible study we want things to, we want to make things right that's why we go to church we want to you know get our business fixed if you will we want to uh make our our relationship with our god right we want to make sure that our god is pleased with us Okay, so this evening we're going to be coming, like I say, uh, Jeremiah chapter 8, and we're going to be talking about um, let God heal. Allow God to heal uh, your mentality. Allow God to heal your spirit, your soul. Uh, allow God to heal that breach that's in our relationship with, with him. Um, while he is yet speaking, listen. He's speaking. He's the Bible say, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open to me, I'll come in to him. Come in with him and I'll sup with him and he with me. But if you keep <laughs> shutting the door in the Lord's face, provoking him to anger, you know, rebelling against him, creating all these idol gods, at some point God gets tired of that, that wickedness. And it ain't like he throwing us away he don't love us no more but we got to be dealt with on um on a level where we gotta you know as if we are children we gotta learn from our mistakes okay and we don't want to wait till it ultimately comes to destruction but um you know we gotta learn and some people some people it's hard to teach them <laughs> it's hard for some people to learn you just can't tell them and, and they'll be like okay you know, I did wrong, so I need to get it right. Some people don't learn like that. Some people, you know, they got to go outside and pick their own switch. <laughs> they got to get their switch out the tree and get some uh, corporal punishment. So, um, with the people of God, if you read concerning the people of God, it seems they always had a problem with serving and honoring, you know, the God of Israel. I mean, it ain't like God was doing anything wrong. God was doing everything right. I mean, he's a perfect God, loving God, compassionate. When the list goes on and on, merciful. He's full of grace. All right, and peace. I mean, you know, he's the almighty God. And the people, like many of us do, we take God's love and grace for granted. And they continued, this was a continual cycle, all right? There was a continual cycle. So, um, 
in in Jeremiah chapter eight, we read an account that uh, of their Im impending judgment. All right, whereas God, you know, had gotten to the point where rather than destroying the world with with water, destroying the world with fire, you know, in His mercy, He He still loved them. But it, it just got to the point where he had to deal with their sins. Because otherwise, you know, when God when God gives his people a promise, if 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 this generation is not stopped, they'll continue down through other generations until, you know, they won't want to change. When you start getting this thing, when, when you start contaminating generation after generation, they won't want to change. They won't even understand what the promise of God is. So God has to step in and say, you know what? I'm not going to allow this thing to, to go on and filter down into another generation. I got to deal with this in this generation. I got to deal. I can't deal with you like the people of Israel. I mean, um, that I brought out of Egypt. I can't keep dealing with y'all like that. Uh, you know, I brought them out of Egypt, took them through the wilderness. That was the point of the wilderness. Take them through the wilderness to the promised land. Teach them how to trust me in the wilderness and take them to the promised land. But in the wilderness, they didn't learn. And so God said, you know what? None of this generation is going to enter the promised land. Not even Moses. <laughs> you will look over and you will see it, but you will not enter in. So they had to raise up uh, Joshua. That was the new generation. So they the ones, you know, went into the promised land, but... um. We got to make, we got to make amends. We got to make uh, peace with our God. And what prompted this message, you know, as I was meditating, uh, I was thinking today. Um, you know, I'm not sure. Some people in different areas uh, rather than South Carolina. So South Carolina, around Columbia, Richland County, the Midlands, there was a tornado warning uh, yesterday. Uh, the weather forecast came out and it was deemed that a, a tornado could possibly come through, you know, the weather, you know, forecast really don't look good. And so you get a call from the, uh, the school system saying, we're going to, um, we're going to let the kids out early and we're going to let the teachers out early. We're going to let everybody go home early before the storm come. Okay. And it, and it kind of brought me, you know, they were preparing. Come on, they were preparing for this this coming destruction that that could possibly happen. <laughs> and it got me to thinking. You know, when we provoke God to anger, when we you know rebel against God, and when we sin and live lawless, and we think God ain't gonna do nothing about it. It got to be, you know, the prophets are warning us, just like the news forecast, the prophets, the preachers, the, you know, the pastors, the teachers, they are warning us of the things to come. The Bible, just read it. It'll tell you of the things to come if you live in rebellion against God, in sin, in, in unrepentant sin. And do we prepare like we prepare for a tornado? <laughs> We concern about our, you know, our physical life, you know, this life in this earth, but we're not concerned about the condition of our soul. And that was how these people of Israel were. The, Jeremiah was telling them, listen, God is not pleased. Repent. And we're preaching the same old Bible in 2022 that they was preaching there. Repent. Repent. Repent of your sins. Come back to the Lord. And those who, who have never known the Lord, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sin. And, and he'll give you the blessed gift of the Holy Ghost. That's what it says. Um, but they wouldn't listen. And so in Jeremiah uh, chapter 8, I'm going to read toward the end. And I'm just going to break down as much as I can get through in the uh, time that we have. Okay. Uh, Jeremiah 8, 
and beginning with uh, verse number 18. And this is uh, Jeremiah speaking because he was the prophet assigned to the people before their coming destruction, <laughs> before their coming calamity. And, you know, if you have been listening to me, um, you know, continuously over some time, God has been uh, lately having me stuck on uh, the people of Israel's uh, dealings with Babylon. And you heard me speaking of Babylon a whole lot because Babylon overtook uh, Israel because of their um, rebellion against God. But see, God just didn't, that just didn't happen overnight. God was steady preaching, prophesying to the pre people, giving them mercy, giving them grace, loving on them, having compassion on them, giving them chance after chance. And they were continuously rebellious. See, it's a danger in that. And when God stopped, stopped talking about, you know, come unto me, come unto me, and his His voice began to say, now you better get ready because, you know, my wrath about to pour down on you. Then we want to get ready. But we can't do that. We got to allow God to heal us in that time of healing. Listen. Jeremiah 8, 18. When I would comfort myself, Against sorrow, my heart is faint in me. Behold the voice of the crowd, the daughter of my people, because of them that dwell in a far country. Is not the Lord in Zion? Is not her king with her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their graven images and their strange vanities? Listen, the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. <laughs> For the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I am black. Astonishment have taken hold on me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is the why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? That's what we want to deal with. Jeremiah said for the for the hurt of the daughter of my people. I am hurt. I am black. Astonishment has taken hold on me. In other words, he he is in a, a state of mourning. And Jeremiah has been um, uh, so named the weeping prophet because, you know, he wept over the people because of their um, their condition. It do, it don't have to be like this. Have have you ever prayed for somebody so? So and 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 you loved on them and you tried to do everything you could to help them and they would not turn they would not you know do what they need to do they 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 just wouldn't listen and then they fall into some kind of calamity that they can't get out of and you just cry you just feel their pain you just feel so bad because you've done everything you could to try to help them and you feel him. That's how Jeremiah was. He preached so. And the Bible said he preached so. And the people rejected him. They looked at him strange. And, and they get, Jeremiah got to the point where he said, You know what? I ain't even preaching no more, God. I can't, I can't preach to these people no more. They're not listening to me. <laughs> but the Bible said it, it, it was like a fire shut up in my bones. I could not contain. I could not hold out because that was my calling. So I had to preach the word. <laughs> Amen. So when that calling is on your life, you can't resist the 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 power of God. So Jeremiah said, "You know what? I couldn't hold out. I had to do what you called me to do, God." And 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 by the way, God uh, already had ordained Jeremiah to be a prophet to the nations before he was conceived in his mother's womb. <laughs> Lord have mercy. But here uh, again. Um, he said, is, is there no bomb in Gilead? And we're going to deal with that. We're going to look at, you know, some more things that, that, that said about, um, the people, but listen, is there no bomb in Gilead? Gilead was known for, for a bomb that they, um, they created. All right. They, you know, different cities known for different things, but Gilead was known for this bomb. B A L M, okay, not B O M B. <laughs> a bomb, okay, 
A balm is a, a healing ointment. Okay, kind of like lip balm. All right. It's soothing. Uh, it's a, a soothing restorative agent. Okay. So God is saying in his word, is there no balm in Gilead? And it's a rhetorical question, meaning, yes, there's a balm in Gilead. All right. And he says, is there no physician there? To apply the ointment? Yes, there's a physician there. Okay? Then why is the health of, of, the, of my people not recovered? Why are my people still sick if there are physicians and there are uh, there's this healing balm that's available? Why are my people still sick? That's the question. Why and God God is asking the question, why does he even have to come to this? Why do I have to pour out my wrath on you before you understand? Why do I have to pour out my wrath on you before you stop rebelling against me when you have everything available to you for you to repent and be healed? And I'm not talking about, you know, this is not the study concerning uh healing of cancer, healing of of, of diseases in your body okay that's a that's a story for another day and like i started with god is a healer he will heal your your physical body and 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 and, and look how powerful and 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 look at the wisdom of god and how he created us um our body has its own natural ability to heal itself that's amazing but when when the body can't do it on its own accord, when something overtakes it so strong, too strong for the human body to naturally heal itself, you know, then we have to take medication. Then we have to have surgery. Then we have to, you know, do these extra things. Okay. But what about our spirit? What about our spirit? We have to make a conscious effort to go to God and say, Lord, forgive me and heal me. We have to go to God to write our relationship with, with him. It's not natural. It's natural for our flesh to, to operate in sin. We were born in this flesh. And that's where we coined the, 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 the uh, phrase, we born in sin, because our our flesh is sinful. So how do we write our relationship with a holy God if we are born in sinful flesh? We repent. The blood of Jesus washes us. We, we ask God to forgive us and we write our relationship with the Lord. What is the balm? The blood of Jesus. What is the balm? The balm is the word of God. The, 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 the Bible says, now you are clean through the words that I speak unto you. See, when you hear the word of God, by faith you believe the word of God, and then you do the will of God. But many of us, we hear it, but we don't believe it, and therefore we don't do it. And therefore, our relationship with God is, is breached. When we operate in our own will, Outside of the will of God, then our relationship with God is breached. And see, the people of God, look how they provoke God. God said, is there no bomb in Gilead? Why are you still sick? That's just like saying, all right, and a lot of us got kids. You know, they getting ready to go to school. You ain't have no lotion in there? Then why your ankles look like that? Why your ankles still ashy? Why your knees still ashy? Why your elbows gray? Because you know you got lotion in there. We apply it for a reason. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ryan, your lip. Why are your lips all cr crusty and chapped if, if lip balm and, and chapstick is available? The balm is to soothe it and make it, you know, smooth and healthy. But see, just in the spirit, too many of us are ashy. <laughs> We chapped because we don't apply the, the healing ointment that comes from God. Our souls is chapped tonight. Our souls is ashy. And we need to apply the healing balm of God. That's what he's saying. Don't you have it available? Then why are you still sick? 
Is the medication available? Is the physician there to, to tell you? Then why are you still sick? That's, that's just like physically. And I'm, I'm speaking this in, in a way like Jesus spoke parables so that we can understand. All right. So if you go to the doctor and, and you're asking him, what's wrong with me physically? I don't know. I feel a pain somewhere, you know, something hurting or something numb or something ain't operating like I know it's supposed to. What's wrong with me, doctor, physician? You, you have the training. You understand the human body better than I do. So what's wrong with me? And, and anytime we got a physical problem, we are, we, you know, that you don't know, you're going you gonna to ask the doctor because you don't want to die. Lord, help me tonight. You don't want that thing to get so bad until you die. But see, when it comes to our spirit, when it comes to our spiritual walk with God, when it comes to our mentality, we don't go and say, what's wrong with me? We just go along with it and don't understand. The Bible says sin brings forth death. <laughs> the wages of sin is death. But we're not concerned about our spirit. Amen. When things get attached to us that lead us down the wrong way, things get attached to us that cause us to do things that we know are not of God, things that are attached to us that, that cause us to bring other people down and discourage other people. But we won't ask God. You won't ask nobody what's wrong with, what's wrong with us because we don't want nobody to really tell us at that point that something wrong with you. And when somebody brings it up to us, we reject it or we get defensive and say, no, something wrong with you. Ain't nothing wrong with me. <laughs> Help us, Holy Ghost. So the physician is available. But why are we still sick? When God says, and he's going to speak to you personally, don't reject him. This is a time of healing. This is a time to heal our relationship with God. This is a time to go in spiritual surgery and allow him to cut away some things, to, to take some things off of us that, that's leading us to a destructive place. Listen, we're still in Jeremiah chapter 8. It says, verse number 5, Why then? Is the people of Jerusalem slidden back by perpetual sliding? They hold fast deceit. They refuse to return. Perpetual. That means continually. Why are my people backsliding continually? I'm available. I will forgive your sin. The Bible says in, I believe, 1 John. If, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's what his word said. But instead of asking God to forgive us sincerely, you know, you know, when a lot of us uh, ask God to forgive us is when we get caught and got to deal with the, the consequences. It's not because we feel in our heart that we have wronged God because if, if it was like that. We, we, if you feel like you have wronged God, God is not pleased with me. You will repent and say, Lord, you don't want God against you because if God is against you, what you going to do? And the people didn't think that way. <laughs> so they, they backslid perpetually. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I, I'm going to leave y'all with good news, but I, I, I got to deal with their, their, their mindset. They took God's grace and his love for granted until it came to this point. And see, when they get to this point, brothers and sisters, it's too late. You got to deal with, you know, the consequences of your sin and prayerfully, you know, God will bring you through the exile that you'll, you'll be that remnant on the other side of it to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. I'm trying to help somebody tonight. <laughs> All right. Because anytime there was a, a, a destruction of God's people, God would leave a remnant because he's so merciful. He's so faithful. He made a promise to Abraham that he was going to bless his seed and his seed will outnumber the sands and the stars of the sky.
He made that promise. And he, even though he got so upset with the sins of his people, he still had to be faithful. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus, for your faithfulness. You know, in the flood, he could have... He could have flooded everybody, but he left the remnant. Uh, Noah and his family was the remnant. Start over. Be fruitful and multiply. Uh, and, and why were they the remnant? Because they, he was found righteous in the sight of God. He wasn't going to start over with no wicked people. He can't start over with sin to fulfill the promise. He had to start over with righteousness. <laughs> Lord, I think that's why it's so important that we write our relationship with God and we be found faithful and righteous in the sight of God. All right. So let's deal with healing. Healing is to make free from injury or disease. And y'all know what our, you know, our chiefest disease is in this, in this land. It ain't, it ain't AIDS. It ain't cancer. It, 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 it's not COVID. It ain't uh, bacteria causing stuff. Y'all know what the chiefest thing is? Disease is sin. That's what it is. Sin. Unrepented sin. And sin causes more death than any of this other stuff. I'll tell you why. Because <laughs> sin is so destructive. And it, 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 when you, when you fall into sin, it, it, Causes other stuff to happen. All right. When you fall into sin, like um, sin will bring forth uh, fear, anxieties. Y'all think about anxiety. That that's a big one on the list. That causes high blood pressure. That causes insomnia. That causes you know stuff like that. All right. When you worry. All right. When you sin, now you got to deal with consequences wondering living uh you know living uh, uh um in a way where you're paranoid you're always looking for somebody to come get you you all you know when you sin and unrepentant you holding stuff in your heart that you hope nobody find out about you know stuff like that and and, and you living with this stuff carrying around with you it's it's slowly eating at you it's like a disease that's the disease you need to be healed of because cancer might put you in a physical grave, but sin will put you in a fiery grave. <laughs> Help us, Lord. Lord, have mercy. All right, verse number six says, I, heart, I listened and heard, but they, they didn't speak right. Listen, verse number six in, in Jeremiah chapter eight, no man repented him of his wickedness, saying, what have I done? Everyone turned to his course as the horse rushes in the battle. Just running after sin. Ain't even thinking about it. You know, a horse that's been trained back then, they had horses and chariots. They ain't have tanks and all that. They had horses and chariots. So them horses had to be trained that when they sound the alarm and run the battle, they going in there. They going in there. They riding a chariot and, and the man, you know, the, the warrior on the back, he driving that horse. He ain't even thinking twice about it. And God is saying, look at my people. Look at them. Instead of repenting, they looking around, what have I done? I ain't done. I ain't done nothing. What have I done? And God, you know, in the world, in, in the society like we live in today, you you can't tell people what's right and what's wrong. You can't tell people this is right and that's wrong. And they'll look at you like, how you going to tell me what's right or what's wrong? When the law makes laws to accept behaviors and activities, that's a, I mean, I mean, it's, it's straight abomination as God calls it. And I'm not just talking about one thing. I'm talking about anything that's accepted in this society. But God says it's abomination to me. But we accept it. We accept it because it's a societal norm. And so when it comes to repentance, when it comes to saying, Lord, 
forgive me of this sin. How you going to ask God to forgive you for it if you ain't done nothing wrong? And that's what he's saying what happened was happening with his people. How can I allow holiness and righteousness? How can I bring forth a holy promise through this generation if you not going to be holy and righteous? If you not going to repent of the sins that you have committed? The people, God spoke to them, but they didn't listen. They Instead, they were, their response was, what have I done? And what I want you to do, my brothers and sisters, and like I was talking earlier about the warning about this tornado, you know, and we preparing ourselves. Every time we get a warning, we buying bread from the grocery store. We, you know, we, we, we getting ready. Because we don't want to physically die. But what about God is saying, if you don't repent, you're going to end up in a burning hot fire. Or an eternal fire. And you're going to be eternally separated from, from my presence. Are we as much concerned about it then? Come on. We need to be healed tonight. And sometimes you don't even know what you need to be healed of because you have accepted it. And see, the, the people of Israel, they have accepted it. You know, what have I done? I ain't done nothing. But look at that. Con con let's continue. Uh, verse number 12. It says, were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? No. You see that? They weren't ashamed. And see, it'll get to the place. See, that's how the, that's how the enemy, he, he gets us. It don't take but that one time for you to try it and get away with it. And now you feel like, oh, I can do it again. And you do it again and don't, you know, don't get caught in the act and, you know, nobody know about it. And now you're doing it again. And before long, you're not doing it in the dark anymore. Now it becomes a part of you. Now you're doing it in, in the broad daylight. I don't care who know. This is who I am now. So I accept it. But in God's sight, it's an abomination. <laughs> and, you know, I'm not, like I said, I'm just talking about. All manner of sin. Because ain't no small sin and no big sin. Okay? But God say, were they ashamed when they committed abomination? No. They were not ashamed. Neither could they. They ain't even blush. You know, back in the day, they used to use a phrase, and this ain't been too long ago, in the closet. Hey, you don't hear that no more. Because ain't nothing in the closet. People just adapt a certain kind of lifestyle and they, they don't care who like it or not. It don't matter if God don't like it. That's who I am and that's what I'm going to do. The Bible says they ain't even blush. Don't eat, you know, your cheeks don't even turn red when, when, when God look at you. And you know he looking at you everywhere you at. Ain't no in the closet with God. He in the closet too. He made the closet. <laughs> oh my God. And, and he said, because of this, therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. In the time of their visitation, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. I will surely consume them. There, there shall be no grapes in the vine, no figs in the fig tree, no leaf shall fade. And the things that I have given them shall pass away from them. In other words, all them comforts and, and graces that I permitted them to have in spite of their sin, while I was ministering to them, giving them time to repent and, and speaking to them, all them comfort, all that stuff going to be taken away. And, and you may say, is God that bad to do that? No, it ain't God doing it. Like God said, I, you know, I'll turn you over to a reprobate mind. In other words, I'm going to give you what you want. You know how it is. You, you might tell a child, no, you can't have it. No, you can't have it. You ain't ready for it. But then, you know, they keep asking. They get all rebellious and mad. And then you just, you know, you, you release them to it. And they they find out how hard it is. Then they come back with their tail between their legs like, you was right. You was right. <laughs> but look at our God. Look at how much time he gives us to repent. All right. Some of us, we can't we can't be friends and we can't love our, our own blood. Now, I, I had a whole, you know, sermon uh, Bible study series on that. 
We can't even love one another. But then soon as one of them hit hit the hit the graveyard, then we we got this pain on us that we can't get we can't get off of. Now it's too late to say I'm sorry, I love you. Want to buy the biggest flower and do all that? It's too late then. God is looking for healing now while, while the blood is running warm in our veins. Put all that pride aside. Put all your selfishness aside and see what God wants you to do. He wants to heal us. He said, come let us reason together, saith the Lord. He has given us a bomb in, of Gilead. He has given us the solution. He has given us the, the thing that's going to heal us. Who is the physician? Jesus is our physician. He's 24 hours, seven days a week. Call him up. And whatever you ailing with, he can heal you. But you got to repent. And it's got to be a conscious decision. I was talking to a buddy of mine, and he might be listening. <laughs> Don't make no comment if you are. <laughs> All right. And I was talking to him about repentance, about making a conscious decision to repent. To turn from your wicked way. Now, when you know, if you if you just promiscuous, let's just use that word to keep it rated G in case some you know young people listening. All right, you promiscuous. All right, and God is calling you to stop, stop. You know, repent of that sin. You know, uh, get some self control. Honor honor your God with your holy temple, your body. All right, but you refuse, and then you get up to. 75, 80, and say, you know what? I don't do like I used to do. Is that a conscious decision to repent? No, you can't do what you used to do. All right? And, and see, it's a difference there. You you 20, you in your 20s, oh, you on fire. But can you make a conscious decision to honor your God and say, you know what? I'm not going to be all out there like that. I'm going to honor God in my temple because he wants me to be holy. And I don't want to sin against my God. That's what that's what um, Joseph said when, when Potiphar's wife came on him. I can't dishonor my God like that. He didn't say, no, I can't do the Potiphar like this by being with his wife. He didn't say that. He said, I can't dishonor my God like that. <laughs> so what about us? That's what God wants, a conscious decision to serve him. Not get to the point where you can't do it no more. That's not really that's not saying I I I made a conscious decision to to follow him. All right. So um going back to the the people of God, they were they were in the presence of God doing all manner of evil and just not even ashamed about it. But what I'm speaking into your ears and to your hearing tonight that I need you to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church is allow God to heal you tonight. Uh, allow God to heal your relationship with Him. All right? A again, healing is to make free from injury or disease, to make well again, to restore to health. God wants to restore us. He, that's why he has given us that balm of Gilead, that soothing, healing ointment. All right, that ointment. God has given it to us, but God asked his people. Don't you have the balm of Gilead? Don't you have this healing ointment? Then why are you not healed? The summer is, is, is upon us. The, the. The harvest is past, but we are not saved. Why? You act like you ain't got no savior. <sighs> Let's move on here. We've got a few more minutes. I'm going to go to uh, Isaiah 53 real quick. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 and verse, verse number five. It says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. 
Thank you, Jesus. We are healed. What what kind of healing is he talking about? With his stripes, we are healed. In other words, he died on the cross for our healing. With his stripes, we are healed. Every time they whipped him on his back, every time that blood came streaming down, when the nails went in his hand, when they pierced him in his side, he said he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. That's what was what we healed from. From our sins. We heal from the sickness that's in our, our spirits. His blood washes us from what? Sin. Heals us. That's what he says. And with his stripes we are healed. We always look at that as, as the, the healing of our physical bodies. But that's not what that even talking about. That's, that's another one of them signal verses where, you know, preacher get all hyped up toward the end. And, and by his stripes, we are healed. But we are we concerned about the healing of our spirits tonight? From the sins, from the iniquities that make us sick. That's what makes us sick. Sin sickness. But by his stripes, we are healed. He done made the healing available to us. But the question he poses to his people, then why are you still sick? I guarantee you. <clears throat> I guarantee you. You won't. I mean, and then healing of your spirit, that's going to that's gonna affect your physical being as well. Listen, I guarantee you, if, if you... Heal your relationship with God. If you correct those things, if you allow God to correct those things that has, you know, caused a gap in your relationship with God, you will make peace with God. And I guarantee you, you won't need no medication to go to sleep. When you got peace with your maker, you can sleep like a baby. I guarantee you. Some of us up all night long. And I'm going to tell you why. I mean, I know it's real life, um, you know, illnesses or, or situations that cause people not to be able to sleep. But a lot of us can't sleep because we worry about something. Anxious about something. And a lot of times those things we worried about, we can't do nothing about. But when you set your mind on your God, when you know you're at peace with your God, and you know he can handle those things that you're concerned about, when you put it in his hand, I guarantee you'll sleep like a baby. Then when I work 10 to 12 hours the next day and ain't even slept at night, worried up all night, pacing the flow. And now that's, that's straining your body. That'll put you in an early grade. Come on. He makes us rest. He makes us lie down in green pastures. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. God said, look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this and I'm going to leave y'all some good news because our time... Is, is at hand. It said. Um, it said. Verse 15. We look for peace. But no good came. And for a time of health. But trouble came. Alright. God said. I'm allow serpents to come in. Serpents that won't be charmed. You know. They had snake charmers. That would charm the. The snakes, but these serpents that are gonna come upon you as a result of your sin, they ain't gonna be charmed. Ain't ain't no way you're gonna get it off of you. Cause it's 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 reckoning time. But what can what can prevent us from reaching this point with our God? That's what we're talking about. Hear the word of God. That's the soothing ointment that's gonna heal your soul tonight. He hear the word of God and repent. Don't act like you ain't done nothing wrong. Don't act, you know, be, be, you know, man up. Let's put it like that. Say, Lord, you know what? I am wrong. Heal me of my sin. Heal my wounded, broken spirit. And God will forgive you. He'll forgive you. And cast your sins as far from the east is to the west. At the end of the day, God wants us saved. That's why he gives this opportunity for uh, ministers, teachers, preachers, prophets to teach us, to preach to us, to 
share with us the good news. God, you know, look at what's going on around us. God has not gotten to the point where he has, you know, condemned us to wrath. We still have the grace of God because listen, listen at the word of God. He's given us opportunity right now. We worry about a tornado, but I ain't thinking about that fire and brimstone that could come down from that same sky that that funnel cloud came out of. <laughs> but if I was you tonight, I would put as, as much, uh, as much thought and, and, and as, as much intensity into, you know, my relationship with God than I am thinking about the weather. Yeah, we were going to jump in the bathtub and put the mattress over. You know, we start hearing a rumbling sound. But guess what? Are we concerned about hearing that trumpet? Are we concerned about, you know, God sending his son back and we're not ready? The bathtub ain't going to save you. The Bible said in the last days, they're going to call for the mountains. Tell Mountains fall on us. But the mountains ain't going to fall on you. Because you got to deal with the wrath of God now. And we're not trying to make anybody fear, you know, run to God in fear. But we want you to make a conscious decision to let God heal you tonight. Heal your wounded, broken spirit. Heal that sin, that iniquity that's in your spirit. And turn again to the Lord. He will accept you. It don't matter what you've done. That's the good news. It don't matter what you've done. He will still anoint you with the balm. The healing balm, heal you from those sins, and set your life on a on a brand new course. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. There is a balm in Gilead. There is a balm in South Carolina. There is a balm in the United States. There is a balm in this world. But you have to apply it to your life. For the healing of your, your spirit, that relationship with God, and He'll write that relationship. That's all we got for tonight, my brothers and sisters. But again, don't be one of those ashy, ashy Christians. <laughs> don't be one of those crusty and chapped believers. Apply the balm, the healing balm, so that God can heal you and make you whole. Y'all have a good evening tonight. I love you, but more importantly, God loves you more.